oh hi yeah it's it's june it's the sixth month of the year which means it is time for the mid-year book freak out tag what's up you guys welcome back to my channel founded in bookmarked i'm Jalisa, and today's video is the one and only the infamous the timeless mid-year book freak out tag this is a beloved video on booktube one of my personal favorites because it really puts into perspective all the books we didn't read this year so far <laughs> i am quite surprised so where's my phone ah because i need to tell you all how many books i've read so far this year this has been probably the busiest year in the past two and a half years and my least well-read year unfortunately which for by my standards by my own no one else's so in total this year i've read 19 books that's kind of it around this time of the year i think i would have already been closer to 30 but it's been it's been a long year y'all i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be very transparent it's been tough and it's been an emotional year for, it's been a very trying year for me i've had highs i've had lows so i will be transparent in that i'm human like you and i go through life too and it's just been hard which i'm sure you can tell because i haven't been uploading as frequently as I'd like to I am trying my hardest to get back into YouTube I miss it I miss all of you I miss the engagement and the interaction but you know we're on the up and up now this is not a therapy session this is definitely not that this is most definitely a book tag video though so I am going to start now before I continue to ramble on about my life dun, 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 book tag okay first question the best book you've read so far in 2022 i haven't read that many okay i haven't even had that many five star reads this year which is not good for your girl but it's okay because the best book that i've read so far is absolutely without a doubt love from a to z by sk ali this book was really perfect honestly it was really perfect for a why romance it was everything that i wanted to be and more it follows these two characters one has multiple score multiple sclerosis the other is struggling with how to kind of combat the hate that comes with being a muslim girl and still remain true to herself and it is just a story about perseverance and strength and how different those things can look for different people it is just beautifully written i love the fact that one of our main characters does in fact have an illness i know people are writing that more frequently in their books and i'm glad because you know a lot of us live with things that make us chronically ill at times and i think too what i love about this book is that the romance felt so realistic because you know sometimes in why romances in a romance in general it's just like it's so freaking fluffy and it makes you feel like this is how love really is and it can be for some people sometimes but let's just be real here i had never had a fairy tale romance before i've been in love you know i've been in relationships but this felt really real and and i honestly think this is a great summer read because they're on spring break so it's kind of like that vacation feel and they do travel but also it just is it's still lighthearted even in the midst of all of these challenges that our characters are going through so love that that gave that five stars rightfully so so the next question is the best sequel that i've read so far in 2022 well funny that you asked that question because i haven't read many sequels actually i've only read one sequel but thankfully it was a five star i think and that was heart stopper volume four by alice oseman this story first of all is just it's so touching and i think with this this volume in particular we get a little bit deeper into charlie and nick and their personal struggles so what they do with behind kind of closed doors and i think i enjoyed that because the first two volumes were like very cute and just made you feel good this one i would say is a bit is digging a bit deeper into things like eating disorders and not really feeling accepted by your family it definitely kind of tackles real challenges people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis so i loved that this was the very first graphic novel i ever read but it's really stuck with me for more reasons than one and nick and charlie are just still so sweet it's great seeing the support that they both give each other in these times i give it five stars i'm pretty sure if not five i probably gave it four and a half i don't know but i love this this story okay i feel like i'm out of breath right now talking all right so the next question is a new release you haven't read yet but want to okay so there's like a lot of books coming out a lot all the time actually <laughs> but i actually have an arc of a book that i really want to read it's called monsters born and made and here's the thing i could have read this by now yes because i own it <laughs> i have it i just haven't been reading fantasy like that if you haven't noticed i haven't picked up a fantasy book fantasy book in quite some time so it's just been hard for me to dive back into that genre 
but so monsters born and made is really interesting because it follows a main character who is struggling to provide for her family so they have to like go out and get this what is it called an oh it's called a maristag and so a maristag is this monster that they they hunt to feed their family well so this particular year coral's having the hardest time getting a maristag basically if she doesn't get one her family will starve at the same time this is happening she's trying to feed her family there is this competition that happens called the glory race and it's only for like the elite people in this oceanic world coral's family is not a part of the elite and they are now indentured to the elite people of this community and they have to hunt for maristags for the glory race well unfortunately coral does not succeed in her indentured servitude she does not provide these maristags for the glory race like she's supposed to so she now is struggling to provide for her sister who's ill they need the medicine they can't get it so she decides to cheat her way into the glory race so that she could win all the gold in the world okay maybe not in the world but they win gold it's been like dub is like hun like hunger games kind of situation so that's exciting and it's like in an oceanic world this comes out in september of this year depending on how this goes i think it'll be a great series to get into um i just want something like different i want something like kind of epic and exciting i think this will give it to me when i can finally open it up and read it because my brain has been broken okay it's not broken i won't say that my brain is working perfectly fine it's just that i personally have been struggling to get back into fantasy like i want to so next question <laughs> the most anticipated release for the second half of the year this was easy for me to decide kingdom of the feared by carrie maniscalco i can't freaking wait for it obviously y'all know i'm a fan of kingdom of the wicked kingdom of the curse was fine like it wasn't my favorite out of the two i just have a feeling that kingdom of the feared is going to be really great yeah obviously y'all know i love wrath as a character i thought he was perfect i'm looking forward to kingdom of the feared now this next one is the biggest disappointment this was hard i have two books <sighs> This was very difficult actually to decide. So I'm gonna choose the one that really disappointed me the most. Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. And here's why this book was my biggest disappointment even though it's not my, it's actually not my, ugh, ugh, what am I saying right now? The reason why this book is the biggest disappointment is because it was going so well in the beginning for me. I actually made a whole post on Instagram about this book, okay? I was raving about it. I said I'm obsessed with this book so far. I really was until about maybe halfway through something in the story shifted and it was almost like it was rushed. But I do know that the middle of this book was a huge turning point. The writing thereafter was just really poor to me. I felt like the story needed a lot more space to really work. I think there is going to be a sequel to this book, but it ended in a way that like made me not want to pick up a sequel. I want to know what happens, but I also don't think the writing was strong enough to make me like feel compelled to buy or rent or whatever a sequel to this story. It follows Joan and Nick and Aaron. Basically, it's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet situation where you have feuding families, but they're like, they're monsters. So they're monster families, they're feuding, and one of the characters actually is trying to kill off the monsters. You have some betrayal in there, you have kind of this push and pull with two other characters who are monster families, who are rivals, who are supposed to hate each other, but really they're falling in love. And the premise was fantastic. I loved the description. I felt like it was really going to be a strong story and it was in the beginning but it just didn't connect like I think it should have. I think the worst part was that toward the end you can just tell that it was running out of time. So that really was unfortunate. Now the next question is the biggest surprise. Now this question doesn't say the biggest surprise in a good way which probably is how most of you were taking this question for me. No this is the biggest surprise in general for me. And that would be Beach Read by Emily Henry. I hated this book. I didn't like it. And you guys know I do enjoy Emily Henry's writing. Two of the three books that I've read from her, I've loved. This one though was a huge disappointment for me. It was surprising because it literally follows writers. <laughs> like they're both authors. That already has a huge appeal to me, but it follows Gus and January, two authors who are struggling to write. Gus kind of writes literary fiction um, and January writes romance novels. Well, they agree to basically swap genres. They're going to write from each other's genre perspective. In the background, you have a lot of other things happening with them. They actually know each other from college briefly, so they're not complete and total strangers takes place on a beachfront so that's like sounds beautiful sounds like a great beach read sounds like a great summer story mm -mm. I wouldn't consider this a romantic story I say that because the romance was very dull no excitement Gus could have been that guy but he lacked personality to me there was nothing really there he was more, more interesting than January who I felt like had nothing going for her at all whatsoever so this is what I imagine Gus would have written 
And then in the background you had stuff about cults going on and it was a lot of extra stuff that I felt like didn't really connect with me. I don't read up on cults so I can't say I have any connection to that. And I just feel like the background and like all the external things happening around them were almost way too much in the forefront because it made me forget about them as a couple or as a couple trying to become something more. Like it just didn't work for me. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Favorite new author or debut to me? This is kind of a tough toughie. I would have to say honestly SK Ali who wrote Love from A to Z. I actually read one of SK Ali's picture books for children a couple of months ago called The Proudest Blue and then for Love from A to Z I, I just ugh like that is YA perfection like that to me is peak YA writing so I'm a fan of SK Ali's writing. And then I think the next question is oh my new fictional crush. Okay so most of you probably think oh Jules we know it's Wrath. It's where you're wrong. It's where you're wrong. I, I do love Wrath, I do. But no, 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 no. Charlie, Charlie freaking Lostra. He's hot, like he's very sexy. He's got the whole dark hair, you know, broody, but not annoyingly broody thing going on. He's open to the most part with his feelings and he knows what the heck he wants, okay? We love a man who knows what he freaking wants. Charlie Lostra, to me is what Gus was trying to be in Beach Read but couldn't succeed at it. He has this appeal to him that makes you want to know who is that guy? Y'all remember that scene from High School Musical was like who's that guy? <laughs> that scene that is how I feel about Charlie like who was this man? He was so sweet and like he was compassionate toward Nora. Every boundary she put up he was understanding of it, he respected it. He's also a little bit misunderstood and I think that he knows how to see like the best in people even when other people see a negative in them. That negative to Charlie is like no that's a strength of yours. It's not a bad thing about who you are. Like people call Nora a shark in this book but she gets what she wants for her clients. Charlie thinks that is one of the most beautiful aspects of her personality and that I love because where some people see not something that just isn't good he sees it as a strength and it makes you who you are and you need to capitalize on that not lowercase it you feel what i'm saying so love charlie new fictional crush now this next one is my new favorite character i'm really grasping for straws of this one because though i did really enjoy this character this is just my new favorite character so far this year because i haven't read that many books and that would be Avery from The Inheritance Games. Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves all of this stuff, his estate, money, everything to Avery, a girl who he don't even know. He has grandkids, he has siblings, he has, you know, children who he did not give anything really to. So the whole book revolves around Avery trying to figure out number one her connection to this man but also kind of fighting off the grandsons. This house is riddled with clues and riddles <laughs> um that Tobias set up for a reason for them to figure out together Avery and the boys of course you know there's some tension between all of the guys and Avery well actually two of the brothers and Avery and there's like that whole low-key not a romance but you definitely can feel some tension romantic tension between two brothers two of the brothers and Avery but I liked Avery because although she came from nothing very very intelligent and I just love seeing an, an underdog kind of come into themselves people definitely underestimate Avery but she is literally like a genius so so I love that and she doesn't take crap from anyone, not any of those boys, not their mothers. No one in that house has any kind of sovereignty over Avery and I think that makes her a pretty freaking great character. The next question is the most beautiful book that I bought or was given this year. I didn't buy this book. I was I guess in a way given this book from Fairy Loots. I don't think I've ever owned anything, okay not anything but that's a stretch. I don't think I've ever owned a book as beautiful as this ever in my life. The Fairy Loot edition of Daughter of the Moon Goddess is incredible. So incredible I'm gonna show you actually I'm gonna show you down here because I feel like y'all deserve to see like look up close. This is the most beautiful book that I have been given this year but the part that is just so beautiful are the edges. This is really impressive to me. This design is I think so intricate and then of course you have the end papers which are also very pretty. Everything about the book is just nice. The artists really took their time with this and just put a lot of effort and a lot of detail and detail always matters to me. Definitely hashtag impressive. Very weird times. I mean talking in hashtags. Anyway <laughs> beautiful book. So the last question is I think like what books I need to finish reading. Let me see. Yeah what books do you need to read by the end of the year? All of them. <laughs> I mean, that's always the goal is to read every book that I own. So I'm not going to answer this question for real because there's just a lot to name. So. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have not yet done this video or this book tag, you definitely should. I love watching tag videos. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you guys next time.